Today I'm going to walk you through how to set up a client farm and field on a John Deere display. Uh, this is a 4600, 4640, same thing. Um, as you can see right now, we're on the GPS page. And to start, we're going to hit menu right over here. Go to applications. And then you're going to see two icons here. There's equipment manager and then fields and boundaries. Equipment manager is going to be for any implement on the back of the tractor. And fields and boundaries is going to be where you enter your client farm and field. So we'll hit that. And as you can see right now, it's blank. So we're just going to prompt everything and fill in all the blanks. I click the box. Right now, client is selected. There's no options to choose from, so I'm gonna hit edit clients, new client, and now I can name it. So I'm gonna name this CJE, hit okay. So now I have a client, which is CJE. So next we're gonna go to farm. No farms, so I'm gonna hit edit farms, new farm, now I get to name my farm. I'm currently at the Elmer location, so I will name it Elmer. Hit OK. CJE, Elmer, hit save. So now I got my client, CJE, my farm, which is Elmer, and now I'm going to go to field. No fields, because we're making a whole new list here. I'm going to hit new field, and now we're going to name it. I'm going to name this side lot because that's where I'm currently at hit OK hit save hit OK so now everything populated in this box that I needed it to I have my client my farm and my field I'm gonna X out of there X out of here and now you can see it actually populated up into location so now I know that I have a field and everything else is selected after you have your client farm and field set up, the track is selected. Now we can actually go to creating the boundary. So to do that, we're going to be on our main run page. Hit main menu. Go to applications, fields and boundaries. And now you can see I have a client, CJE, farm, Elmer, field, side lot. Now to create the boundary, all you're going to do is actually hit create boundary. There's two ways to create a boundary. You can create one off of existing coverage or driven. Uh, existing coverage would be if I disk a field and I paint it blue, the screen was recording, I had all my coverage, then I can actually make a boundary and it will draw around my coverage what I had. Or you can just drive the boundary, which we're gonna do today. So let me hit okay. You can name your boundary. It's just gonna take the field dash boundary so we're in side lot side lot boundary um, if you had a 30 foot disc behind you or implement it doesn't matter what it's gonna actually take half of that so it's gonna be offset so it'd be 15 foot and that's where it's actually going to draw the boundary line if I want to change which direction or where I want to draw the boundary I would just hit this and it actually moves so we're gonna make it on the left side today. I'm gonna to hit start recording, switch my hand here, and now it's just gonna be a little display of your tractor, and when I start moving, you're gonna see it draw. So it's gonna draw this pink line. The curved part is actually following the implement that straight line is a snap line right to where you started so the edge of your field was perfectly straight and you knew it was perfectly straight you could actually just end it and snap a line right there or you can just drive and connect the lines so I'm just doing a little boundary here let me speed it up a bit I'll drive over here So I want to stop there. 
So I'm gonna hit save. Boundary is saved. I can hit X. If I wanna look at it, I can go to fields and boundaries and hit populate it with the boundary that I have just made, which is 0.34 acres. So if you make a boundary for every one of your fields, you will know the acreages of everything, which is a big plus. Hit X, X again, and now on my GPS run page, it'll actually show me the boundary as well. So after we have our client farm and field set up, we're gonna make our way back to the GPS run page. And first thing you're gonna notice is auto track is off. If I try to turn it on, it's gonna tell me a guidance track must be selected. So you can't auto track unless you have a track selected. So we're gonna hit okay here. And the first thing we're gonna to do to set up a track is go to set track here at the top. There are no tracks selected, so we're gonna hit new track here, or we can hit new track over there. We'll just hit it here for the time being. This is gonna give you a bunch of different tracks you can select from right now, and most of you guys are, are gonna be focused on straight track and AB method. So we're gonna hit AB method. Now it's gonna let you name your track. Right now I'm gonna leave it at track one, but if you were in a field, and you wanted to make two tracks, one going north and south, name it north. Uh, then your second one, if you want to name it east to west, name it east. But this is where you would name that track, so it's a little bit easier to select the one you want. So we're going to name it track one, hit OK. And now the screen prompted me to set A and set B. If I try to set B, it's not going to let me because I need to set A first. So I'm going to hit set A. And all that did was drop a point right here. And then when I set B, it's going to drop another point and snap a line right from point A to point B, straight line. Doesn't matter if you're a little bit crooked or driving not too straight to get to those points. It doesn't matter. It's just taking the straight line right to A and B. So now that we have A set, I'm going to actually put the tractor in forward. We're going to go a little bit. You can see it's counting down. Now I can set B. So I'm going to set B. Auto track resume must be enabled. Everything filled up. The pie is filled. And now I can hit auto track. So let the tractor get on its line. And now we're tracking at zero inches off. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to set up a implement in your Gen 4, Gen 5 display. Both have the same page layout, so let's jump into it. First thing we're gonna do is hit menu. We're gonna to go to applications, and then we're gonna to go to equipment manager here. It's a picture of the disc. We'll click that. Right now, we have an implement selected. If we no longer want this implement selected, all we're going to do is tap on this minus button right here. So let me do that. Now that gives us the option to add an implement. Hit add implement. All previous implements that you've added will show up here. Once you hit add implement, it's just a whole list. It saves them. But for today, we're going to add a new implement. So let's hit add new. Now I can name it. Let's name it a disk. So now it's gonna have a whole checklist and we just keep scrolling down here until we have everything checked out. So our first thing is controller. Does our disc have a controller? No, normally maybe like a fertilizer spreader that might have like a rate controller and that's when we would add that. So we're gonna hit none, air cart. There is no air cart. We'll hit scroll down for dimensions. You might think that it's already filled and you don't need to fill any of this. You end up having to fill center of rotation. So the way to click on this box is anywhere in the white, just click on it. D, center of rotation, we'll click here. And it's actually gonna give you a paragraph of what it wants you to measure and the meaning behind it. 
So we'll just do anything here. We'll just put five foot just to make it happy. If you had a rear connection, this is also where you would enter it. You would hit that check and then measure from connection point to connection point. I don't want to do that, so we'll hit OK. Next will be operations. This is an important one. This is actually how you tell the display what you're doing. If you're tilling, spraying, planting, harvesting, whatever, this is where you would tell that display what you're doing. Very important for um, data documentation and everything like that. So with the disc, we're gonna scroll down to tillage. Now that we have tillage, we're good to go. I wanna scroll down again. Now we have working width. This is where you're gonna enter the width of your implement and that also sets your track spacing. So we can do it off of feet or we can do rows. So if I had a planter, say it was a 12 row planter at 30 inches, it would automatically populate it to 30 feet track spacing. Or if I just wanna do feet, I can just put in 30 foot if I knew it off the top of my head. Hit okay, work point, we'll click that. So now it's gonna give us another little paragraph here of what it wants us to measure. So it's just connection point to where the first blade shank opener is actually contacting the ground. So we'll just put seven foot. Work recording, we'll tap on that. This is how you'll get the implement and display to actually start painting blue for you and recording. So if I had a disc, I would probably use SCV number one or whatever SCV is tied to the up and down of the disc. If I had a chisel plow or a three point implement, I would use rear three point. So every time I lift it up, it's gonna stop recording. Every time I put it down, it'll start recording and painting blue. So let's do SCV1. Connection type, this one's easy, has nice pictures for you. Uh, draw bar, clevis, three point hitch, which is a draw bar for the disc. And if I had an implement on my, or if I had a receiver on my implement, this is where I would add it. So I'd hit add receiver, then it goes through all the measurements it's gonna want you to take. I don't have one, so I'll hit that and now I'm out of things to fill in so I should be good to go hit save you can enter work summary in here if you really wanted to this is where you change your season I'm in an 8R 410 hit OK so now I have my disk populated with my implements hit OK go back here and now if I had my SCV record.